Uh, I'm gonna let you know right now, I found a very horrible installation job on this engine, okay? Hello there, everybody. Good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. This is a Ford F-150 with the 5.4 Triton. That's the three valve. This is the one that had uh, the infamous timing chain guide and timing chain tensioner problems. So much so that it was an engine blower upper situation if uh, the thing ever had any kind of low oil pressure. Uh, this thing, this particular truck had also experienced uh, similar symptoms right at around Stockings the engine. Looks like 200,014 miles on the odometer and maybe we can see if I shut the door. Yep, I'm having a Monday syndrome. A little bit off kilter here. 200,014.2 miles on the odometer. Customer states, engine runs rough. Engine has misfires. Customer states they replaced ECM. They replaced the engine with a brand new slash remanufactured unit. And the thing still has uh, uh, some issues. We can see here that the check engine light's on. And I understand that there is a litany of codes stored in this ECM. So what we're going to do here is fire up the scan tool real quick. We're going to documentate the trouble codes that are stored in the ECM. And then we're gonna diagnose this thing for uh, perhaps another opinion. Um, I do need to kind of go on record right now at this current point in time and state that this video is for entertainment purposes only. And that the views and opinions expressed here are strictly my own and may or may not be factual. Now the reason that I have to say that or I'm going to say that is a, a matter of self-preservation actually. At this point, I foresee great potential for this to turn into a sticky situation and I would prefer to, uh, to not end up in the limelight if things go south regarding this little deal here. So I found some paperwork inside of the vehicle and uh, we can see that this, uh, uh, there's, this is a warranty coverage paperwork on the engine that's been installed in this truck. And they are stating that this thing is a remanufactured slash rebuilt 5.4 liter three valve only the best, no compromises. There is a five year parts and labor warranty on this thing. Now this is funny right here, because they uh, they pay up to $110 an hour in, lower, in warranty claims. Uh, there's not a shop on the planet right now charging $110 an hour, so they're a little dated on that one. Uh, that's not the issue though. Uh, the issue is, is they're promising a, uh, a very high end rebuilt uh, component and um, and I don't think that that's what is in this uh, particular truck. Uh, one of the things I noticed on startup, and I've heard it more than once, is that there is a, uh, a very loud brrr, rattle noise on initial startup. Now that's not really a good sign that you wanna get out of a, uh, of a rebuilt engine. So I'm thinking that there may be an internal fault in this engine. Now the issue that I have with this is uh, they claim that they have installed new redesigned camshaft phasers. Those are the uh, the sprockets on the end of the cams that the chains run off of. Uh, these uh, phasers uh, are here to promote better oil flow and functionality uh, to the phasers, okay? Um, it does have a Melling high volume uh, engine oil pump installed. Now that's pretty standard procedure when you do the timing job on these, uh, these five fours. Um, they said they put some new gaskets in there. I would think so. They put in new VCT solenoids and it has an all new valve train. So what does that mean? They put in uh, new valves and uh, lifters and rockers and everything else. Like what is all new? Do they put new valve stem seals in it? Uh, that's kind of a vague, um, that's vague right there and I'm not so certain I appreciate that. Uh, they, state, they state they've installed uh, new pistons, uh, hyper eutectic graphite coated pistons. They installed an OEM multi-layered steel, that's MLS uh, head gasket. They've also installed the timing cover and the oil pan to save you time and labor. So I, I'm not really buying this. I mean, the only thing I see here that's any value that has any weight to it is they mentioned the Melling high volume oil pump. Why did they not mention the manufacturer of the pistons? And why did they not manufacture the man or mention the manufacturer of the cam phasers? Uh, you can get a redesigned updated cam phaser from Ford, uh, which is what goes in this engine, or you can get one from somewhere else that Ford didn't make that's a copy uh, that could very much be the cause of the rattling uh, noise that this engine exhibits on startup. It seems to run okay. Um, slight hesitation off idle when you give it some throttle. Uh, customer states it has decent power, but it's uh, something's not right here. And especially with uh, that check engine light being turned on, we know that the ECM has even identified that something's not right. So they're offering us easy core returns, they're offering us warranty. Um, 
Yeah, and they got a A plus rating with Google and the Better Business Bureau. That's that's grand and all, but the thing still isn't right. Now we do not know if the problem is with the engine or with the installer or with the the, the way that this vehicle was diagnosed and the path of the repair. Uh, I do believe, simply based on that rattle that I heard, that uh, there's an issue with this engine. It did sound like it was timing uh, timing cover related or timing chain related. Um, but it would have to be torn down in order to confirm or deny that. We are not going to tear this engine down. Somebody else did the install and they did the recommendations that did the repairs on it. And the what was purchased was this engine from this other company which shall not be named. So I don't know if we have an issue with the installer, with the engine, or both. Uh, either way, uh, like I said, the views and opinions expressed here are strictly my own and I'm sharing them with you for entertainment purposes only. Because this video might just ruffle a few people's feathers. Opening Z Hood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look who that guy is. All right, so now that's all out of the way. Let's go back to our 2005 Ford F-150. It's got the 5.4, V8, three valve, single overhead cam. So there's one cam above each bank of cylinders. So cylinder one, two, three, and four are gonna have a camshaft. And then cylinder five, six, seven, and eight, those are gonna have a camshaft, uh, two timing chains, two tensioners, uh, four guides, an oil pump, and a couple other little knick-knacky items here and there. Uh, and the two phasers, of course. So, 200,000, 14 miles on the odometer, all this stuff checks out. Let's get into our ECM and see what those trouble codes say. Scrolling down to engine. Let's open her up and see what we get. Codes, menu, memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving on, satellites linking up in outer space, establishing communication protocols. Ho ho, look at that. There's some stuff going on here. All right, we've got a P0053. O2 sensor heater resistance bank one sensor one. That's that's a little odd. So bank one sensor one. Okay, on these O2 sensors, there's uh, there's usually four circuits running to those. There's two circuits for the sensing element. Then there's two more circuits to run the heater in the sensor. Uh, the ECM will run the heater in the sensor to cause the sensor to wake up and become efficient, and it can start doing its job. If you did not have a heater in there then you'd have to wait for engine temp to increase and then exhaust gas temp to increase and then that temperature would have to heat up the sensor and then the sensing element within the heater uh, would be able to function properly so we have an issue with bank one sensor one that's the upstream that's the sensor that the ecm uses to determine its fuel mapping strategy that sensor is very critical to the ecu in order to determine how much fuel to feed the engine so now we're moving on, we've got a P0175. That indicates that the fuel system is too rich on bank two, that's the other side of the engine. So bank two is getting too much fuel. P0345, CMP, that's camshaft position sensor A, circuit problem, again, bank two. CMP, sensor A, intermittent. So sometimes that problem is here and sometimes it's not. Also on bank two and that's a P0349. Moving on down, this one's fairly inconsequential. P0553 power steering hose sensor input high. Uh, that may be relevant, it may not. The P1000, that can be dismissed. That just means that the drive cycles on this car have not been completed and all of the monitor tests have not been ran, run, run slash ran. P, this one's a good one here. P2006 IMRC intake runner control stuck closed bank one that's not okay that could be an issue with some of our fueling problem but also those o2 sensors could be an issue with some of our fueling problem uh, the imrc actuator is on the back side of the intake manifold uh, on the engine so we would uh, probably have to what we do for that is pull the intake manifold off remove the actuator assembly look inside of all the intake ports make sure that the uh, the levers and the flaps inside are not broken because if they break or if the lever breaks off then that one side can stay closed if that's the case i think we have to replace the intake manifold assembly so it's a possibility that this thing needs an intake manifold or simply the actuator that runs those valves inside of the intake um, has failed electronically moving on one more code with an o2 sensor p 
219502 sensor excessive lean signal bank one sensor one so we've got we have issues going on on both sides of the engine uh, some of it's uh, potential electronic some of it could be sensors some of it has to do with valve timing some of it has to do with the intake manifold we've even got stuff going on with the power steering so like i said earlier there is a litany of issues going on with this and from what we know so far someone has put in a remanufactured engine and i heard pop and see hood i heard that they replaced uh the ecm as well so sorry for the concrete guys doing what the concrete guys do they're cutting quartz countertop today hence the grinding noise in the back but we're gonna pretend that's not there and take a look under the hood here and what we can see this thing has had an ECM replacement done. That's a nice, shiny, brand new looking Green Man unit. I'm certain that it's been programmed. We don't have a security system issue and uh, the vehicle runs and drives. Uh, let's get out of here. So we don't have to listen to the mirror mirror sound. They're still, they're still at it. Uh, let's take this opportunity to get our test drive underway and perhaps uh, it'll be a little bit quieter when we return. Yeah, I gave up. I uh, gotta go. Gotta go, gotta go. Let's go ahead and pull this unit out. Quick spin around the block. Riding along. Okay, so it feels decently strong. No crazy misfires. But there's a lot going on with this engine, according to the ECU. Pulls to the right a little bit, too. Look at that. Steering wheel's a little weeby wobbly. It's not okay. Alrighty, our test drive was fairly uneventful. I'm probably going to edit a bunch of that out. We're headed back into the shop space here. What I need to do, I think the concrete guys are still going at it. Let's just pull up out front, kind of farther away. And I want to take a quick uh, peek under the hood real fast before we decide what to do with this. Again, we can see the ECM's been replaced and drawing attention down here to the engine, we can see it has been replaced and this is a remanufactured unit. You can see the paint on everything. It's nice and shiny looking. We've got some new parts down below, new tensioner. If we look underneath of this uh, intake coolant crossover right here, you can see the aluminum under that is fairly clean. So the block looks like it's been cleaned out. We can tell all the parts have been transferred back over. Again, another painted over valve cover here. Uh, it's so painted over that they painted over the stickers. You guys see that, uh, you see the sticker down there? There's a sticker right, right in here. You can see the ruffles in the paper. They painted over top of that. They painted over the bolts. They painted over all the rubber grommets and bushings to make it nice and shiny looking. Uh, we can see the exhaust is the original. They didn't replace the manifolds. Uh, looks like they kept the studs. Those don't look like they've been replaced, but who knows how long they've been in there. Uh, so that's kind of all we can tell so far from up here. Uh, looking around just at our wiring harness, uh, I'm checking the harnesses because all this stuff has been removed and we've got some uh, a lot of circuit codes going on. So I'm wondering if we have any kind of like damage to the wiring harness. Uh, for example, did they mount the transmission to the back of the engine and then pinch the harness? Definitely something to check out later on. I recall the C or the P0345, the camshaft position sensor circuit codes. And I'm looking around trying to figure out where where those guys are. I don't think I don't know if that is the the camshaft position sensor circuit, position sensor, or if this one is the position sensor. Now, one thing I've just noticed, take a look down yonder. We've got some electronical tape on there and it feels like butt connectors inside of that tape thing. So perhaps there's some wire damage to that. We need to recheck that also. I believe this is our bank one side. So that's camshaft position sensor bank one, cylinder one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, eight, if memory serves. Uh, that wasn't looking that great. I don't remember if the, can the code was for bank one or bank two. We'll have to recheck that in a minute. Um, checking out this other side, we can see the actual sensor itself down there. It looks like it's been replaced. It's fairly clean looking. There's a new bolt in it, and it appears to have uh, some numbers etched in the side. So I'm assuming that that sensor has been replaced. Uh, 
the other one on this side also appears to be in a similar condition. So I think they tossed in a couple camshaft position sensors while we were at it. And yeah, not much else to see here except they did appear to perform some kind of wiring repair uh, on that circuit as well. So I'm gonna I'm going to assume that there's more butt connectors in there. We need to pull that tape off and find out. find out because we saw those trouble codes. Uh, let us go ahead and get this unit into the shop and uh, maybe get it on the, on the lift, lift it up and take a look down below. I want to take a look at the circuitry for the heated oxygen sensors. Uh, we've got a resistance uh, issue on bank one sensor one and I thought there was another, where's that other one at? Uh, bank one sensor one excessive lean signal. Yeah, yeah the 2195. Uh, real quick, while we pull this in, I'm going to pull up the data on this and we're going to check, uh, see what those sensor, or what those the data is telling us about those sensors. Words, I can't do the words today. Don't worry guys, I'll figure out, figure it out in a, a few hours. Maybe tomorrow, eventually. Anyway, I'm going to back this thing into the corner rack because the uh, the other two racks are occupied with other vehicles at this point in time. So we're going we're gonna to back her in swing around that corner of death we have going on in there and then uh, we'll rack this thing up and then take a look at the rest of the circuitry that's visible. Smooth operator. All right, lined up with the pillar and lined up with the pillar right here. I think we're good. Parking's the auto. Let's uh, let's go ahead and check our data before we shut her down. And why are we not connected? Oh, my connector fell out. Error, plug, plug connection error. There we go, trying again, retry. Okay, pulling it up. Let's go O2 sensors. Look at here, O2 sensor number one, bank one, 11 millivolts. But if we look at O2 sensor, bank one sensor, or I'm sorry, bank two sensor one, that's the one that's highlighted. 79, 600, 90, 700. See how it switches high, low, high, low? We can pull up the graph here for a more accurate representation. We're 11 millivolts here, bank one sensor one. So we're only concerned with the upstream. Those are the, uh, the bank two and bank one sensor ones. Those are the ones in front of the catalytic converter. Then you have the converter assembly and then the downstreams, the bank or the, uh, the sensor twos are behind the converter. And those are the monitors for the converter. So we can actually pay them little mind at this point. Uh, so anyway, uh, we're looking at bank one sensor one. We see it's not switching. It's just kind of dead. 11 millivolts, the range is 10 to 13. So it hasn't moved. Let's, uh, let's blurp some throttle here and see what it does. Give us some throttle. It's not really moving. Nope. But if we look down here at bank two sensor one, that's its counterpart on the other side of the engine. This one is switching uh, very regularly. High, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. And this right here, as we spaced our graph out, that was us holding up RPM. And now we're gonna see this graph restabilize now that we're down at idle. But what we did not notice is the other sensor did not emulate this one here. So we have an issue going on with uh, bank one sensor one in the exhaust. That may not be the problem, but it's definitely a problem. Let us check misfires while we're here. And looking at misfires, we had one misfire show up on cylinder one. That's fairly inconsequential. Bunch of zeros here. So we don't have a misfire issue. We have a fuel control issue and the ECM has been able to compensate for it couple randoms on cylinder seven uh, yeah not nothing really to pay attention to uh, let's back her on out and I want to take a look at uh, fuel system data let's take a look at our fuel trims a fuel the fuel trim is the overall level of uh, fuel that the ECM is giving the engine or taking it away you have short terms which adjust uh, overall fuel delivery um, on the short term and then if the ECM sees that short terms are trending like in a positive direction or a negative direction, it'll then turn up or down the long-term trims, which is now the new baseline. 
So consider uh, long-term fuel trim is baseline for overall operation and the short term is what gets adjusted uh, on the fly, so to speak. For example, if I give it some throttle, like so, short-term fuel trim just changed. But long-term may not have changed much at all. That's kind of the fuel trim uh, nutshell explanation on it with the quickness. And look at this right here. Long-term fuel trim bank one, long-term fuel trim bank two, negative 28. So this thing's pulling back all kinds of fuel. I don't like that. That's not uh, where it should be. And it's stable at our negative 28 because we can see that the short terms on bank one and bank two are negative three, negative five. So they're hovering uh, in the negative zone. Uh, anyway, I think we've seen enough inside of our ECUs. Let's go ahead, pew, power this unit down and uh, we can repop the hood one more time and uh, get this thing up in the air. Take a look down below. There we go, kick you under, kick this one under. Let's get them all set up here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That one's good right there under our frame. Good to go. To the right front. There we go. Right rear. Good to go. Beautiful. All right, moving on up. Green subscribe button. All the way up. She's off the ground. Good. All right, reaching maximum altitude. Uh, one more click, I think, with the lock. There we go. That will set the rack down on the locks for safety. See how they stop. There we go. All right quick take a look at all of our lift points make sure everybody's still safe and good and we can come under here all right continuing our underside drivetrain inspection here of our engine you can see some shiny new bolts in this oil pan so they did have it apart it was regasketed uh we see a bunch of sealant silicone business up there on that oil filter housing adapter i don't really care for that i shouldn't be seeing seeing silicone seeping out uh from holes or ceiling surfaces on engines that were just rebuilt. It's not uh, it's not a good look. You shouldn't be seeing that. What else do we have here that's worth taking a peek at? Uh, let's see. Looks like we have new motor mounts. You can tell the paint's a different hue. Yeah, there's the close-up on that sealant. I don't care for that. I think the gasket is plenty sufficient and you shouldn't have to put sealant on something that is a sealing surface. Okay. Anything else sticking out at me? Not particularly. Can't say I'm thrilled with the install job on this because I'm taking a look at, uh, where'd they go? Ah, there it is. See that O2 sensor wire right there? We can see the connector kind of hanging out. And if we come back from to this view, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm looking up and the wire is not secured to anything. It's just kind of there. Uh, similar to this O2 sensor, this is the upstream cat converter, and then there should be another one for the downstream somewhere. Oh, it's in the converter. See right there? That's the downstream. That's inside the converter, right in the middle. Anyway, this is not the greatest uh, install work I've ever seen. Um, I think that this probably plugs into that, and then uh, not around that loop. So that's not routed properly. I think that has to be redone. Yeah, I don't really care for any of that. So I don't see any damaged wires down here, but I also can't see behind that intake manifold up there. We may have to remove that manifold. Uh, oh, looky here. That's how you can tell it's a reman or a junkyard engine. See that little button right there? Little guy right there? That's with a, a heat sensitive glue. And if this engine gets too hot, that glue will melt and that little button will fall off. So if you overheat this engine and then try to return it for warranty and that button is not there, then uh, they will not honor your warranty claim. They'll tell you, sorry, kick rocks, you overheated it, violated the warranty, have a nice day, buy another one. All right, so we're not gonna see much down here. I think that's, uh, that's all that we're gonna find is at least the wires are not routed properly and I'm being pointed at the rear of that intake manifold uh, one more time. Let's go ahead. Move it on up some, we'll come off the locks, lock release, and then let her down. All the way down again. Oh no! Dave broke it! It's like a coolant Exxon Valdez. Oh no! 
All right, so back at our engine on the top side, we have bank one over here, and I believe that's bank two over there. So cylinders one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, the trouble code for that camshaft position sensor was a circuit fall on bank two. But what I'm seeing right here straight away is something's not copacetic here with our bank one. And bank one's easier to reach, so we're gonna pull this back and pull back some of this tape just to confirm, in fact, that we do have uh, crimp style butt connectors inside of here underneath of this electrical tape. Let's do this uh, very carefully so as not to disturb the electronical connection that's happening here. But we do want to bear witness to the horrendous wiring repair that somebody has attempted here. I can feel it through the tape. I know it's bad. I know it, I can feel it. And I bet you the other side is just as terrible and we may very well find our circuit code uh, right there on that other, other connection. This tape is also very horrible. It's, uh, it's kind of mushy and excessively installed. We should have used the, uh, the cloth tape that's designed for um, wiring harness repairs or maybe use some convolute. There we go, look at that. Two butt connectors. Let's see, how are we doing here? Get rid of that garbage. Okay, they crimped both sides. So that's an okay looking connection, I suppose. It's gonna corrode and cause a circuit issue later on, but for now, I guess it's good. Should have used some heat shrink and maybe some better connectors. It's 2023, we don't need these anymore. But if you can't see it, it's not there, hence the tape. So let's go over here to our other side. We need a 10 mil, I'm gonna pull this intake tube out of here. And uh, we need to take a look at that other sensor down below. Quarter inch mini walk A coming in. Whee, you stole that from, uh, what was the movie? Uh, Wayne's World, mini walk A. Actually it's pronounced mini walk A, which is Algonquin for the good land. Party time. Excellent. And I found some convolute. We have wire convolute. Let's not go there. That's our bank two camshaft position sensor. Let's get that connector unconnected here. And we'll peel all this nonsense back and see what, uh, what they did inside of here also. First off, I believe it should be known, or at least mentioned, that there's a huge possibility that there's absolutely nothing wrong inside of this harness but since we are diagnosing we need to uh we need to verify some things i know that a connection does exist because that trouble code said that the symptom was intermittent meaning it's not there all the time so the symptom does exist but that does not mean oh they use better connections here yeah you know oh they put more convolute on it too okay I don't think that's really the issue. That actually does look pretty good. Uh, we could test it electronically later on. Uh, anyway, as I was saying though, I do believe there is an issue with this circuit or the, with the connection somehow, some way. Uh, that could be it right there actually, see that? Look at that right there. What I was about to say though, before I keep interrupting myself, is just because there may not be a circuit issue in here, it could be somewhere else on the harness. But then I see that, you see that uh, little orange piece behind the red piece right there? It is sticking in front of the pinhole for the pins on the sensor to, to attach to. So that actually could be causing a bad connection because it may be failing to uh, seat this thing properly uh, on on the uh, on the sensor itself. Let's just put that back where it goes. There we go. Look at that. That could have been it also. Don't know yet. That fits better. Okay. It could have just been a bad connection also. Alrighty. So here's what we know at this point. We have identified uh, a lot of hodgepodge stuff, and we've identified that the wiring harnesses are not routed properly, but we have yet to really find anything solid and concrete. I mean, yeah, I, I did see that, uh, I, well, I speculate that sensor may not have been making the proper connection, uh, but that's not really concrete proof. Uh, it could have had 
like what I'm saying is the the connection here, that connector making the connection could have been installed and it did click into place, but internally it could have been at an angle. See how I'm doing that? It could have been at an angle and it could have withdrawn that one pin due to that weather seal obstructing the front of that pin. And it could have just been touching at the, the end of that little connection right there and not fully seating into it. Uh, that would definitely have caused an intermittent trouble code or an intermittent loss of signal from this camshaft position sensor. And it also could have been causing, uh, uh, well, actually both of those trouble codes, the intermittent code and the, uh, the circuit fault code. But it still is not concrete proof. It's, it's a good hypothesis, but we don't have a, a full on smoking gun just yet. Uh, I think what it's time to do now is move on and take a look at the, uh, at the IMRC system, the intake manifold runner control system. Uh, I'd like to pull this intake manifold off of here and get, uh, get access to the unit in the back and take a look at the IMRC. Uh, I believe, I believe there is an issue with that symptom and it's probably responsible for at least two or three of those trouble codes that are there, but we're gonna have to pull this unit off to find out. So let's start disconnecting uh, a few of these connectors here. Oh, look at that, that's a brand new uh, sensor as well. Yeah, they put, they parts can in the crap out of this truck. So much so that it's got a new engine. They've replaced everything and it still doesn't work. So now we need to find out what is problem. Let's see here. I can't get that connector off. That's a that's a tough one. I have to come back with a tool on that one. Uh, we can pull off our uh, fuel pressure sensor right here. Let's lose the injectors. This is a similar setup to the GM. Uh, manifolds where everything comes off with the manifold you just have to disconnect it all and get everything out of the way so that's three injectors injector four is out back can't even feel it where are you injector four can't see you either oh that's hiding yeah the wires stretched on this one there's i feel the wires pulled yeah something's wrong that uh, fuel injector wire is tight it's super tight See it right there? Let's get back in closer. You guys see that? That's the fuel injector wire right there. Something is just pulling it straight down. All right, we'll get that thing disconnected later. I can't reach it right now and it's a little hot back there. Uh, over here on this other side of the engine, we've got some PCB hoses. It's got a new one of those. It's shiny and it's patina. So somebody parts can into PCB hose at it. There's a connector, we need to get that disconnected. Pull that guy up, broke that. Shoddy disconnection work. I don't think it's broken, I just need to put the little clip back. Set that aside. Fuel injector one, two, three right there, and then four. I can see it. Uh, I can kind of feel it. Oh, it's hot in there too. Here, move that right there. Go in there, heater hose. It's a built-in hose holder for me. Push the button, wiggle it, got her. There we go. That's fuel injector cylinder four disconnected right there. Sure, now we need to pull the green tab on this PCB hose that I've got in my hand here. Bear with me, folks. This is all tangled and if none of this is right. I don't know how they got this put together. This is all, it's just everywhere. It's not okay. I can't like it. Okay, we've got, there's a vacuum hose here for our purge solenoid. Disconnect it here, it's probably a little easier. Push the white tab in and then struggle with it. Oh. Nope, mm, maybe this side over here. Again, we'll push the white tab in, and then, oh, I gotta make the sound. I'm gonna push it in. Oh, come on, it's not coming out. I can do this. There we go, got it. Yeah, push the tab in and then go raw. 
Right, we'll stick that aside over there. And we should have a vacuum line coming from somewhere land. Oh yeah. There's that murderous vacuum hose that goes in the back of the intake manifold. That's uh, That thing's always fun to contend with. Uh, we'll deal with that in a minute. So at this point, all we have left is a fuel line right here. We're gonna disconnect that in a moment. And it looks like one more connector on the throttle body right there. Going in. I need a pick tool to pluck the little connector back because I just can't reach it by hand. Push that up. Oh, red piece is out, no worries. Oh, I've got the tab. I feel it. Can't get the, the leverage on it. There it is. And there's one more connector hanging out in here somewhere. See, this is what I mean, look at that. There's nothing, these are supposed to go somewhere and they just left them sitting there doing whatever they want. It's not, that's not how you charge somebody to, to install an engine. And if that's how you install engines, you shouldn't be installing engines. But if you think you should be installing engines, but you can't charge any more money, then do better at it and do it the right way. Because this is not okay. It's just, it's just not. Alrighty, let's start pulling some uh, hard parts off now. I'm gonna pull this uh, air filter box off the top of the intake first. Pull the studs out right up here on top of the dash. And then we've got the uh, other two around here on this side. Uh -oh. Got a little bit of a conflict here. I cannot reach properly. That's why I have wobble sockets. What is the problem? Sorry, I have Russian accent voice stuck in my head. I was on a live stream yesterday and y'all had me doing what is problem accent voice. So now it is stuck in cranium. Air filters clean. It's very hard to switch back from Russian accent voice to regular accent voice. <laughs> okay, so we got our big throttle body here. I'm tempted to take that off in case I need clearance to get this uh, this thing out of here. I think I do, because that's actually a very deep uh, intake. And I actually might have to remove the alternator. I, I don't know. Well, let's just start with, uh, I'll tell you what, you know, you know what we're gonna do? I'll pull the bolts out of the uh, bottom of the intake. I'll unbolt everything on this manifold. And we'll see if it sneaks out the way it is. Uh, if it does, then uh, we'll just pull it out as a single unit. And if it doesn't, then we'll take it apart more. On clickage, multiple on clicks. So we're just gonna run down the back of this thing. Now those engine builders, they said they put new gaskets in here, right? In the engine. So let's find out if the installers put new gaskets on the manifold. I mean, I don't think they're leaking. It could be, but I wanna know if they actually did it or not. Because I think right now I'm more annoyed with the installers than I am with the rebuilders. Uh, one thing though, don't forget about that rattle that I mentioned that I heard that, that, uh, when I first started this truck up. Uh, that's not a anything else here problem. That's a problem in there. So there is an issue with this engine. Here we go, that's what I need. Electron ratchet. So I'm gonna need this. This is mine now. And we're gonna reach back right down inside of that hole. Pull out that 10, and I believe there's gonna be one more. Yeah, right there lurking behind it. I got my finger on it right now. I have my finger on it. I don't got nothing, but I have my finger. Come here, Bolt. I got you, got it hot, 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 hot. Okay, is this thing, I don't know if it's disconnected on this side or not. It could be. I don't think there's any more fasteners. Did I miss any? I got that one. I have this one. Yeah, I've got them all. I have them all. Hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. There we go. 
Okay, same situation here on the other side. Let's pull out all of the manifold bolts. Nick. I missed. I'm reaching my finger around. Ow, hot. I'm trying to hot, hot. Come here. Got it. Oh, it burns. Oh, no. I could wait a little while and. You know, it won't be so hot, but I figure if I burn off all the nerve endings, then I'll be able to work on hot engines all the time. It'll save me time in the future. Getting It's the no nerve ending club. Uh, we have no feeling in our fingertips. Okay, so I think we're disconnected. Yeah, manifold's disconnected. Let me get my goodies out of here, and we'll see if we can't sneak this thing out. Uh, again, I might have to disassemble it further, but uh, it's worth a shot. Let's see what happens. Um, yeah, I can tell you right now, there's not a chance this is coming out with that alternator in position. I can already see that coming. So, we drop this unit kind of back down. More disassembly is required. Trial body's got to go. I already know. Okay, there's our throttle body. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull this alternator bracket off. And the fourth bolt right over here. We have a connector for the alternator. I know you couldn't see, but I got that disconnected. And that's our power cable connection. Pull this unit off. And our bracket comes out with us. We can set this section of harness aside. It appears we have approximately two more bolts on this alternator and of course there's the belt so let's get down there with the belt release tool uh, on that tensioner detension the tensioner and then we can pop this nader out of here ratchet coming down we're gonna attach that to the front of the tensioner and untension the tensioner I'm gonna leave this ratchet on this tensioner so it doesn't uh, spring back in a different direction and then uh, we'll just slide the belt off the nader. See down there? See how, we, how we're set up? Right there. So all we've got to do, slide that guy over, push it back, and then right down here on one of the idlers, we'll just pull that guy off. And that's not enough. Okay. So since we're off the idler, off the alternator, now we have enough. So we'll leave that right there. We have the space to get in here now with a ratchet. Break those bottom two fasteners loose that are on the alternator. There's one of them. And I think the bottom of that alternator is slotted, so we don't have to remove these bolts entirely. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Give me back my tools, you... Got myself in a sticky situation here. Look at that. There. I'll take my socket back. Okay. That out of there. And our electron production unit is free. There she is. 
Yeah, see what I mean? That's a huge intake right there. Lots of space. All right, let's pull it out. Remember earlier when I said I wasn't gonna do any repairs on this? This uh, sure looks a lot like I'm doing repairs on this, doesn't it? Let's get this thing snuck out of here. I disconnected the fuel line already. Um, we got a vacuum hose here, hold up. Unkick that. Fuel stinks. And we've got something hanging us up here. What is holding on to the back of this? The IMRC connector is connecting it and I can't get it to come off because they didn't route that right. All right, hang on. Let me go around the other side here. Let's see if I cannot get a hold of that connector from this side. There it is. Yeah, 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 we can see it. What do they do here? There's the IMRC connector for the little motor. See that? And they weren't supposed to run this that way. It was supposed to go under, so there's slack on it. Build it full of dielectric grease, too. Okay. I think now, are we disconnected? Perhaps. I just found something broken. I'll show you in a second. I saw it with my little eye. All right, there's our intake manifold. We'll come back to you later. Look here. Busted. Cylinder head temperature sensor. They left it there. Look at that. Didn't even bother. Do anything with that. It's just sitting there hanging out. Well, that's junk. Oh, what else we got going on here? The wires look horrible. Hmm. I'm not seeing anything going on with an O2 sensor. This was that fuel injector connector that was binding and installed the wrong way. See how, how tight they had that? This connector was like here. So this is not set up properly. And I'm trying to get a good eyeball on the rest of this harness. I'm looking for some damage maybe to those O2 sensors. Or perhaps it just has a bad sensor. It's also possible. I don't know, it didn't look like it though. It looked like they had, uh, had replaced it. Okay, let's go back and take a look at the INRC controls on, uh, on this guy here. Oh, look at that. They put a new IMRC motor in it. Isn't that special? So why does nothing work if they replace this motor? Do not rotate by hand. Got it. Yeah, no problem. How do these gaskets look? They put, uh, looks terrible. They put silicone sealant all over those gaskets. Again, stuff you don't need to do. It already has sealant. And they loaded it with RTV. Look at that. This is, it's terrible. Look at that. There's no reason to do that. Do not put RTV sealant on a ceiling surface that that's not that's not okay that's garbage so we ruin that we need to redo that with another set of gaskets this this looks like it was a leak from some kind of coolant issue coolant leak perhaps but what we can confirm here is that uh, these little runner flaps are not broken off the linkage is not broken here linkage is not broken there i'm not sure why we have a trouble code when uh, well, we've got a new component here. So we, we, I think we have a lot of electrical problems with this truck. That's what I think. We have a crappy, shoddy install and some electrical issues. All righty, let's take a peek and see if we can't identify any damage to the uh, electrical circuits that operate on those O2 sensors or that operate the O2 sensors. I think this is one of them. Yeah, yeah, that's the connector right there. We can see, again, they did not put that thing in the housing. So none of that was routed properly. Let's pull. I think that's the other one there. And there's the connector. That's, that should be O2 sensor on bank one over here. That's the one that had the two trouble codes. What the heck? What? No way. Okay. That, uh... That explains that. The sensor is broken in half. Hang on here. 
we'll flip this thing back up and make sure that that's what this is. Because this looks like O2 sensor housing to me. Yeah, hang on here. Let's get some lights out. Moving back up, re-returning, re to the green subscribe button. Let's run this thing back up in the air. I think I found at least two of those trouble codes. All right, she's back up in the air. One more click. Ding, down on the locks. Y'all know the drill. Setting it down, lock it up. There we go. And let's see what this uh, this business was about. So this is the one that had the uh, the heater code, and it's the one that had the uh, what you call it, 11 millivolt code. Yeah, look at look at that. The thing's busted right off. Like they broke it. Here's exactly how this went down. Someone broke this, and they plugged it back in and stuck it on there. And ship the car this is this is crappy install work someone broke this and they failed to uh to do anything about it so that thing literally disintegrated in my hands that was pretty broken guaranteed it's a forward sensor too all right seen enough on that let's go ahead and bring her back down i did not see any any other wire damage um i didn't find that the transmission was smashing a wiring harness which is something i was afraid of that when that engine was installed uh, one of the uh, sections of wire harness got pinched between the engine and transmission and smashed it. But based on kind of what I've seen so far, I don't think that uh, uh, smashed harness is the issue. I was able to tug on all those wires. I can see the O2 sensor wires. Oh, my evidence is gone. Where'd it go? Evidence gravity. It's in there somewhere. I don't care. I got it on camera. Yeah, I'll find it. It fell down. Like right here, I'll find it in a minute. Anyway, as I was, I don't see evidence of harness being smashed between the engine and transmission. So I think this is just a game of finding out what has been broken and concealed and what is not. The, whoever installed this definitely broke things. What they did, like this right here, for example, they just stuck that thing back in the hole, just like that. Yeah, it got broken off. You plug it back in hope it works and then if it works it works and if it doesn't then it doesn't but yeah we can definitely see that's 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 not okay you can't be doing stuff like that people it's not all right now with regards to this imrc uh stuck closed see we have a closed position and we have an open position right here the issue that i had is when we had those wires that were connected uh, uh running to uh this unit right here and the ones that had come up and went over top the intake they were running very tightly under and around and through and over and under and whatever you want. They were running on this linkage and through this linkage. And what that would do is if this motor tried to actuate this linkage, it couldn't because there's a stretched wire running over top and plugging into something like right here on that fuel injector, for example. So if this wire came up and went this way and was super tight right here, well, imagine we have a tight wire here and I try to try to expand that. See how it puts resistance on it because this has to swing down. See it go down in order to begin to turn. Well, if I've got something holding on to this where it can't come down any further, that means that the motor doesn't have the kahunas to overcome that wire that was binding it and it would have left this thing stuck in the closed position. So there may not be anything wrong with this uh, IMRC motor controller. It could have just been a, a, an issue with that faulty wiring back there or wire routing rather that prevented this motor from from actuating uh, i speculate that because i didn't see it and i didn't know that that's how these wires were routed uh, until we took this apart but i think that's a very uh, likely probability and cause for uh, that trouble code that we saw so i'm i'm starting to, to really get a good big picture on what happened here and uh what's going to take to resolve this it, it just needs to be put together properly i i would like to order some parts for it I'm really, really not okay with this right here. This is not okay. This is the stuff that will definitely cause a leak. And furthermore, that's gonna break off and then the engine is gonna eat that and that probably can't be good either. So we do need another set of gaskets. I need to install this thing properly. We need to put an O2 sensor in it. Uh, I would like to replace uh, and make the appropriate connections uh, on these uh, camshaft position sensor codes. Um, or sensor issues, but at the same time, since this is bank two and I know I heard that noise out of this engine, I also think there's a problem 
with the actuator, or uh, um, not the actuator, what's it called? Uh, da, 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 well, it's the sprocket. It's the VVT sprocket inside. That's the part that's actually uh, just the camshaft. Uh, we may have a problem in there. Uh, I need to ask my guy, the owner of this truck, if he'd like me to take uh, this thing apart any farther and uh, this further and just uh, disassemble it more in order to uh, figure out what else is going on. But here's what I think is going on here. I think we have a crappy reman engine with bad components on the timing system and it has a rattle on startup. That very well could be the cause of the camshaft position sensor code because if this thing is not where it's supposed to be, the ECM may hypothesize that the sensor is incorrect or there's an issue with the circuit, especially being an intermittent. You know, it's sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. So that is a plausible explanation for the P0345 and P0556, I think. I don't remember the second one. I'm pretty sure about 80%, I'm around 80% accurate uh, with this wire being tight underneath of that, uh, uh, that little connecting linkage rod over there. Uh, this thing's broke and needs to be fixed. And that O2 sensor over there is broken and also needs to be fixed. Uh, somewhere along the lines in there, some of that stuff is responsible for many of those trouble codes and probably those fuel trims while we're at it. And I see my uh, my sensor half right here. There she is. Yeah, what happened here is somebody went to pull that apart and they didn't connect it and they yanked on the thing and it broke this off and then they found that it was broken off. They plugged it back in and acted like it never happened. That's what happened here. This is, this is just crappy installer work at its finest. Alrighty, folks, we have seen plenty of evidence to condemn the last guy that worked on this truck. So here's what we have, uh, we've addressed so far. P0053, heater resistance, bank one, sensor one. So there's obviously a resistance issue if the thing's not connected. Uh, fuel system rich, bank two, sure, we have sensors that are junk. Camshaft position sensor, circuit A, and circuit A intermittent. Those two are up in the air right now. Haven't touched the power steering. P1000 doesn't count. We figured out uh, the very probable cause of the intake runner control stuck closed. But I'm wondering why it didn't give us a bank two. Maybe there's just one bank, like it just considers IMRC one thing and not two. And excessive lean signal on uh, O2 sensor, bank one, sensor one. So uh, I'd say we have, uh, we've come up with a, a very decent direction to begin repairing this. Uh, I have called my customer and I told him what we found so far, sent some photographs, and uh, everybody knows kind of what we have found at this point. What I'm going to do tomorrow is order that sensor, that sensor, I'm gonna redo that wire connector. Those ones can stay, I think those are fine. Uh, what else did I find? I have to reroute all of this stuff properly. Replace that O2, I think I already said that. Yeah, Regasket this stuff, I might have already said that. And then we're gonna put it all back together, drive it again, listen for engine noise, and, uh, and see if we have any other issues that show up um, uh, on our scan tool regarding our codes. I'm also gonna clear out all the ADAP fuel trim relearns. So we're gonna reset that negative fuel trim value back to zero. We're gonna go out and drive it, see how the thing responds and behaves, and then uh, we can make appropriate decisions and recommendations from that point forward. So at this point, I have nothing more to do in this video or on this truck except for plug up these holes before I close up for the night. And then I am out of here. So having said all that, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed this invasive diagnostic procedure. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. I'll see you guys on part two. Again, thank you for being here, and I really appreciate you being here all the way to the end. Do not forget to tap that like button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. End of video, end of forward, end of transmission, end of really, really crappy installation procedure.